tell me, Sarah, where did you kind of realize this? And then how is this strategy different than say long-term traditional rentals? Absolutely. I discovered it by turning my primary into a furnished rental. In my mind, I thought this will be great. It'll get rented on the weekends. I'll go visit my grandparents or I travel full time. So I'll go down to Mexico. And my very first tenant was a traveling nurse. And I realized, oh, this is awesome. You get one turnover, you know, one time you have to communicate with your cleaner for three months. And then that tenant even extended and stayed an additional three months. So then I slowly started turning, this is inside of a fourplex. I started slowly turning three of the four units into medium term. And then I bought the fourplex next door. I turned all of those into medium term. So now in two buildings, I'm running seven medium term rentals. And on a building where my PITI is 2000, I'm bringing in $7,500 of rent. Mm, mm, that's huge. Tell us what's the difference, just so people can understand, what's the difference between a monthly rental in that area and a, a furnished rental? Yep. So the one bedroom, one bath unit would rent for long term for $850. And that's very high end, like that's the height of the market for that area. This is Omaha, Nebraska. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then for my furnished rental, I'm getting 1875 And in the month of August, I will turn it back into a short-term rental and I'm able to get 2200 but only in the month of like July and August. And so I'm actually netting more as a medium-term rental in the winter because I have a tenant who's fully occupying the unit. Yeah. Yeah. It makes so much sense to do this. And a lot of people, this is kind of the whole concept of really getting to understand what are those different vehicles, right? Because once we name our number and we pick our passive income number, how much do we need to create every single month? And I'm curious for you at the time, uh, what are your expenses to live right now? You know, you yeah. travel the world, including all the travel and all the wildness that you have. What do you think your expenses are? Yeah, it's definitely increased. I've started attending a lot more networking events and, and spending more time in the US. But but Stephen, when I started investing in real estate, I was spending $1,200 a month because I was living in a just a, a very scarcity mindset. Like I, I call it a dirty backpacker mindset. And so a lot of your audience is likely very, very far from ever spending $1,200 a month, but that's where I started. And so it's interesting. Holy. I love what you talked about, like making money and then managing money. I was really good at living really small and not experiencing a lifestyle creep because mm -hmm. I, I decided really early on that I would invest in real estate. And so even when I was making $47,000, I was putting away everything I could to invest in real estate. So it created a very cheap lifestyle. I now, mean, $1, now $1, I'm spending a month. I, that's, a month. that's more than I, that's, I spend more on food. <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> and what's really cool is that that looked really fun. Like that was three months in Brazil, um, three months in Argentina, three months in Mexico, a month in Portugal. So it wasn't like I was like sad in an apartment in oh. Iowa, like eating cereal. I was having a lot of fun, but what I can tell you with confidence is now that I've upped my budget, I'm having a lot more fun. <laughs> yeah. Well, what you were also taking advantage of, it should be made clear. You're not talking about being in the U S paying U S prices. You're in countries that the exchange rate is super beneficial. It's kind of like exactly. when I was running Airbnb is I went and lived in uh, Medellin, Colombia for, for a couple months. And I was paying like a thousand a month to live. And I was living big. I was eating out. I was, I was at one point I realized I was taking the train places and I'm like, the the cab is a dollar fifty American. Why would I spend another forty minutes on the train? This is dumb. But point being, if you're in that point where you know you're living, uh, you know it's five thousand bucks a month to live, and you end up setting your passive income number at ten thousand, you're able to then back in. How am I actually going to get there? And this medium term rental strategy. Although not fully passive, it's a great make plus multiply, putting those two strategies together to be able to create that type of income to allow you to start doing what you want, because it's not that difficult for you to start understanding how are you going to get 
to $10,000 a month in passive income. If you take a product that normally is selling for eight fifty a month and you're actually selling it for, you know, a thousand dollars plus more per month, you only need 10 of those units to be able to have that thing, create that type of income, you know, not a hundred percent hands off, but mostly. Well, and that's what I kept reminding myself is obviously dealing with tenants is not people's favorite part about real estate investing. But then I started realizing my dollar per hour was so high and it allowed me to leave my nine to five. And the moment I left my nine to five, I did what any entrepreneur does. I started businesses. Um, well, at the beginning, I gave myself more jobs. Like until you start hiring yep. people, you think you're a business owner, but no, actually I had like five jobs. But now that I have staff that helps me run these businesses, uh, I mean, I'm making more money than I would have ever imagined. Yeah, because once you step into that entrepreneurial mindset, you can actually create much more. But there's a lot of people who aren't meant to be entrepreneurs. Like they're not meant to go and take that feeling of risk and do those things. No problem with that. I believe anybody can if they set their mind to it, but you don't have to. That's what's so cool. You can stay in your job and create that security that you're comfortable with while also creating this other uh, income stream, setting up vehicles like the one that you're using here to be able to actually get to that destination that you want to be at. So talk to us a little bit about if somebody wants to go down this path and they're thinking to themselves, hey, you know, I got a couple rental properties. I kind of don't really like these things, or maybe I'm running some Airbnbs and it's getting a little bit old. And, you know, there's a huge shift that's happening. A lot of people have Airbnbs and they're not seeing the returns that they were seeing before, which is the reason that I don't run Airbnbs anymore. I, you know, I only buy large multifamily apartments and, and other types of assets that I know are stable in down markets. Cause I've experienced what that Airbnb model is like, but for all those people who are in that position, this could be a great strategy. So how would you recommend they go about beginning to get educated on what this vehicle looks like so they can decide if this is something they want to add to their portfolio. Yeah. Well, it's a lot easier to turn your Airbnb or short-term rental into a medium-term rental because it's already furnished. So the first thing that I would do is I would list it on Furnish Finder. Um, it's $99 for the whole year. They don't take any commission or anything out of it. And I would just see what is the interest in having 30 days or more on that furnished rental. Um, that would be the easiest thing to do. If they have a non-furnished rental, then I would use that same website, Furnish Finder, but I would go to furnishfinder.com forward slash stats, S-T-A-T-S, and I would find out what are the comps in the area. And you have to analyze your property, make sure it is worth it. Once you account for furnishing it and utilities, Oftentimes it is worth it, but there are some cases where it's not worth the hassle of furnishing your unit yeah. for whatever reason, how much you can get long-term isn't that much less than what you can get medium-term. And I'm always telling investors, like, follow the numbers, let the numbers make your decision, not your emotions. So mm -hmm. those would be the two ways I would approach it, depending on the type of property they have. Yeah. I call that doing the math. You really have to be able to sit down and do the math and look, I'm not a numbers guy. I don't love being in numbers all day. I hire smart people to do that for me, but you got to be able to do the basic math. And it's not that hard to really be able to look at it and see, Hey, how long is it going to take me to pay off if I furnish this whole thing? And is that going to be worth it? So, you know, one of the things that I think we can really offer to investors and our listeners here is an opportunity to see a vision of a life that's maybe different than the vision that they currently have. And I think that's one of the most important things because, you know, step two of naming your number is really this compelling vision. And what I like to do is be able to show examples of incredible people who are living incredible lives, not so that other people can match it exactly, but they might get some inspiration. You know, if you're, if you have you know, a few kids, you can also do what we're about to talk about. But, you know, if you're a single person or you've got, you know, a partner who you're on this journey with, um, tell us, Sarah, about this kind of dream life that you're living and, you know, walk us through how that's actually possible because of using the vehicle of investing. Yeah, I, I love this, Stephen, because it really was so intentional. I knew what I wanted my life to look like. I wanted to spend, like I said, three months in Brazil and three months in Vietnam and three months here. That's what I wanted my life to look like. And I always tell people when I talk about travel, 
you insert whatever that thing is. Maybe it's more time with your kids or maybe you're a cyclist and you just want to go on a long bicycle ride on a Saturday. Whatever it is, like make that your goal, like prioritize what you want in life. So that's what I did. I had a long list of things that I wanted to accomplish before I turned 30 or before I settled down or whatever life is going to turn into in my 30s. And I had a long list and then I just made it a priority. And now what's so cool is that because I share everything on Instagram, I had other real estate investors say, hey, I want to do that. And so I invited 11 investors to come on an epic adventure with me earlier this year. And to my surprise, nine of the 11 said yes. The other two that didn't come was just because of pregnancies. And so they were like, oh, we'll come to the next one. And so what I've designed is now a company that caters to real estate investors. And I get to go on epic adventures with people like me. I mean, it sounds like people like you too, Stephen. Like if you're spending three months in Medellin, I'm like, okay, well, Stephen and I just became friends because clearly we value the same thing, which is experiences. Yeah. Well, I think that's so cool because here's one of the things I'm a big believer of put together a group of people and go do the stuff you want to do. Cause frankly, they also want to do it. One thing I noticed locally is like, nobody likes planning anything. Well, I don't either, but it better to be the person planning it so that you can do it. And I think that's really great because what you're actually doing is you're simplifying the process for people to connect with one another. And what is really powerful. I mean, one of the, the key steps of naming your number is actually getting access. And one of those things that you need to get access to is a community. Because when you get in community, when you go and have these life experiences that reinforce your vision, that reinforce what you want, and you show yourself that it's possible, you reward yourself. But then when you can tag that along directly alongside a community of like-minded people who are on that same path, not only are you gonna learn about other vehicles that might get you where you wanna go, but two, you're going to be able to set in even deeper these new beliefs because when you're going from where you want to, where you are right now to where you want to go, it's a journey. And like we talked about earlier, when you had that life-changing experience, I've had many myself as well. And when you get knocked in the face, but you're making a change and your friends or your family or the loved ones around you who only want the best for you, but they're only looking through the glasses of life that they have, When you keep hearing from them, you're going to give up on your dreams and goals. And that's why it's so key to get in community. And I love the opportunity to be able to do that on an adventure because what you do is you really set that in much deeper with an emotional experience connected to these people. So I think that's phenomenal. Today's episode is sponsored by Von Finch Capital. If you're interested in investing alongside me in the same type of real estate opportunities that I personally invest in, then head over to Von Finch Capital and join their private investor network. You can do so at vonfinch.com slash invest. Join me on that next deal. And I look forward to seeing you on the inside. Thank you for listening to the Investor Mindset Podcast. If you like what you heard, make sure to rate, review, subscribe, and share with a friend. Head over to theinvestormindset.com to join the Insider Club, where we share tools and strategies from the top investors and entrepreneurs on how to take it to the next level.